and welcome back to TechFlake. The 750 Singapore dollar slim light gaming build is finally here. Let's go through each and every part and build it, shall we? Alright, so I bought all the parts from Lazada.sg and Shopee.sg. If you want to know more, you can watch my other video. I'll leave a link to this exact PC buying guide at the top corner and a description down below. First up, we have the processor. I went with AMD at this time, specifically the Ryzen 3200G processor. Coming in at 136 Singapore dollars, this processor is a 4-core and 4-threads processor which comes with an integrated graphics, the Vega 8 graphics. It also comes with a great CPU cooler, the Ristaf cooler which is supposedly better than the Intel stock cooler. Overall, a great value processor for office work and light gaming. For the motherboard, I've chosen the ASRock Fatality B450 Gaming ITX AC board. At the price of 167 Singapore dollars and 66 cents, it comes with some great features such as integrated 802.11 AC dual band Wi-Fi, Nichicon Fine Gold series audio caps for better sound quality, and this board is also Ryzen 3000 series processor ready, so we will not face any issue pairing with our processor. An ideal board for this small form factor PC. Next, for memory, we have the Patriot Viper 4 Blackout series. This is a 16GB RAM kit which means it comes with two 8GB RAM running at 3200 MHz. Ryzen processor is gonna benefit from this fast RAM and also overall great multitasking capabilities. This costs 108 Singapore dollars and 90 cents. For storage, uh, we are going with a normal SATA Rev3 SSD. In this case, the PNY 2.5 inch 480GB SSD. 480GB is ample amount for storing work documents and probably some games. And the SSD is gonna help boost performance on the operating system and essential applications. This cost me 79 Singapore dollars. Now to power all these components, I went with SFX power supply, the Silverstone SX 500G. This 500 watts power supply comes in at 139 Singapore dollars. It's fully modular with flat black cables, which is gonna help greatly with cable management. It also comes certified with 80 plus gold. Finally, we are gonna put all these small form factor components into this small case. At 120 Singapore dollars, we have the Fractal Design Note 202 case, a slim matte black case, which also supports a graphics card if my client choose to include it in the future. This case can also be oriented vertically or horizontally. Personally, I like it when it's vertical. Alright, if you didn't catch all that, we are gonna summarize all the components for this gaming build and the cost of each of the components. So after adding them all up, the grand total is $750.56, a bit off the $750 marked by $0.56, cents. not too bad. This is of course in Singapore dollars, so for my international viewers, $750 Singapore dollars is equivalent to around $550 US dollars. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's build this PC.
And yes, it did boot up on the first try. That is definitely a sense of relief. Now, I've also tested 7 games on this PC build as I was really curious on how powerful the Vega 8 integrated graphics is. I'm gonna briefly run through the average FPS that I get with this PC build. First, we have Dota 2. I know a lot of Singaporeans play this mobile game, including me sometimes, and I can say this PC build can run Dota 2 with no issue at an average of 67 frames per second with texture, effect, and shadow quality on medium settings. Next, I ran it on Rainbow Six Siege, another popular title, and I love me some R6. It does well with an average of 66 frames per second, really playable. This is with medium presets in the settings. Thirdly, I tried another popular game, Call of Duty Warzone. I managed to get an average of of 42 frames per second. This is only when I lower my render resolution to 66. Texture resolution very low, particle quality low, and shadow map resolution low. Even with a 42 average frames per second, I do not recommend playing this game on this build as I experience constant stuttering when the firefights gets rough. Next, I tried a more recent first person shooter and that is the game Valorant. And to my surprise that it can actually run at an average of 60 frames per second with material, texture, detail, and UI quality set to high. If you want more frames per second, just lower the settings to medium or low quality. This time we're gonna try some RPG game and on this list we are starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This game is released on September 2018 and I can get an average of 28 frames per second on the lowest preset. A bit too low for my taste but you can probably play it if you don't mind the stuttering. Released on October of 2018, I tried Assassin's Creed Odyssey. A really open world game and I'm not surprised that I actually get an average of 25 frames per second on the low preset. A really unplayable with this PC build. Lastly, I tried some Grand Theft Auto 5 a game that was released back in April 2015. And yes, I get an average of 63 frames per second. This is with FXAA, MSAA, VSync, and all advanced graphics turned off. Very playable and you can also play GTA Online with not much of an issue with it. Alright, so here's the summary of the games I've tested. Overall, Vega 8 graphics are pretty solid. However, I would stay away from games like Warzone, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Playing this game on this PC build really takes you away from the real experience of the game. But it definitely excel on RPG games like GTA 5, mobile games like Dota 2, and first person shooter like R6 and even Valorant. However, in the end, my client will use this PC mainly for office work like writing documents, uh, using emails and surfing the web, and maybe sometimes play some game like Football Manager which I think can definitely run with no issue. This PC build also has great expandability options like adding a graphics card and another SSD which my client can upgrade down the road. Alright, that's it for this video. Uh, this is my first time building with a small form factor components and I had fun and enjoyed building this PC. I'm thankful that it turns out great and I'm looking forward for more PC builds in the future. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see on my next PC build videos. As always, if you like what you see, click the like button. If you love what you see, subscribe for more future tech content. This is TechFlick, signing out.